Hello and welcome to AFK Journey, a free-to-play PC and mobile-friendly RPG brought to you by the same people who made AFK Arena. It's also available right now. Set out into the world of Vesperia as the most well-known sorcerer to ever grace the realm of fiction, Gojo. I'm just joking. You actually play as the ancestor of the Shadow Wizard money gang, Erdwin, but you can customize him to be incredibly funny and attractive. You control the wizard and get to explore Hesperia with your comrades to uncover the mysteries of the land that you were once familiar with. You see, Merlin suffers from a little bit of amnesia, and while I can't tell you everything that happens in the story, you learn about the impact you made on this world and how spells you casted in the past are affecting the villages and cities of today. Right now, I'm in the dark forest learning about the corruption that's taking over the woods. The humans are currently being blamed for this, and Gojo here is the only one capable of dealing with the issue. Kyoshiki, Murasaki. As I said earlier, I'm not going to spoil anything about the story here because I would prefer you to get that experience yourself, but I can tell you that exploring the world is a good time. This game does color very well and it utilizes the western fantasy setting perfectly. The art style is also really unique. I don't know how to put my finger on it, but it's like this perfect mix of anime, cartoon, and medieval styles. There's villages, knights, kings, mages, talking creatures, and many other aspects to enjoy about the atmosphere. As a fan of D&D, the aesthetics here are something to appreciate. My personal favorite area is this part of the forest at night because you get to see the plants glow in the dark. There's also other small details I enjoy, like the background changing depending on the character's faction, your character pulling out a torch when it's nighttime, or going to a table to talk with your comrades. The developers put a lot of care and attention into the world, which can be appreciated by both fans of AFK Arena and newcomers. There's callbacks from Arena that veterans will enjoy, but there's also bits of meticulous detail put into the world through its setting and world quests that newer players can appreciate. Like how earlier I mentioned the background will change depending on the character's faction, well I just learned recently that if you manually scroll to the other characters, you actually get to see the background transition into the new one. It's a very pretty environment and it serves as a great background for when you do some actual gaming. In the open world, you can explore villages, caves, do puzzles, create shortcuts, and use some of the fastest teleporting I've ever seen in any game. Seriously, just look at this. Some of the puzzles include lighting up steps in a row, pushing boulders, and aligning lights to reveal the location of the arc. Once you come across an enemy, you can begin the actual combat of the game. The gameplay is both simple and strategic at the same time. You place your characters out onto the chessboard, and the battle begins. Each character has two skills and an ultimate. As the battle rages on, your characters will build energy, and you can tap on their card to use their ultimates. But you don't always have to play like this. You can speed up the game and hit this card on the side to turn on auto battle. If you haven't noticed already, this is an idle game. It's not that type of idle. Your characters will act independent of you, using their own skills and ultimates to defeat the enemies. You choose where the heroes start, but it's their battle to finish. And it also helps that the game can be played with one hand on a phone. So you can do these battles casually and relaxed while on a car ride, in school, and in the corner when you're trying to avoid family members at a social event. The game actually does have some tricky battles, so you can't just go into every fight placing your units in the exact same spots. Finding the best places to put your troops and win the battle is a skill that's easy to learn but difficult to master. And not every battle will be a normal fight like this. There's plenty of alternate battle types, like fights that have you use obstacles on the map, battles that gigabyte buff one character to make them take on an army, fights that restrict you to using certain characters, and many others. Also, there's fights that you can just automatically win, because if your team is much stronger than the enemy, you just one-shot them. It's pretty satisfying. And I know what you're probably thinking. Ah, Mr. Fee, you're so funny and attractive, but how can I make my team strong like you? And the answer is simple. Don't play. Wait, that's not how games work. Yes, you heard me. The best way to get resources and build your team up is to take a break. While you're at school, sleeping, or watching a Mr. Feet video, your little hamster over here will collect resources to help your characters get stronger. And by doing the battles in this menu, you will actually increase the rewards you get from being AFK. 
Hey, that's the name of the game. Of course, that's not the only way to get resources. You can obtain them from quests, battles, and chests available in the open world. But now that you've got the resources, who can you use them on? Well, duh, the characters. You obtain characters through gotcha, which is just something that we gamblers can't resist. In all seriousness, though, this game is pretty generous with the amount of summons they give, and if you're lucky like me, you'll be able to get a lot of legendary units. And lucky for you, you can be lucky like me. What? Because if you join now and play for seven consecutive days, you will receive tons of heroes and over 200 summons for... Yes, you will receive both for free. And the best part about this is you can use this chance to unlock characters you want through the wishlist feature. You can set your preferences for which characters you want to obtain. This works for both legendary and epic units. Like here, for example, I wanted Igor, so I selected him for the preferences. And thankfully, I got him. Oh, is that a five star? Oh, it's the one I wanted. Oh, cool. <laughs> What the deuce, I actually did not expect that to happen. <laughs> but this is also really useful for the epic units because if you obtain multiple copies of them, you can raise them to be even stronger than some legendary characters. Now that we've covered the resources and the characters, let's see what happens when we put them together. Just like the gameplay, the equipment menu is very simple. All of the characters within the same class will share equipment. So if one of them has the best gear, then they all have the best gear. But equipment isn't the only thing they share. They also share levels together. This is honestly one of my favorite parts about the game because it allows me to use a variety of characters. I don't have to worry about wasting resources on a unit I may or may not like because everyone in the back will automatically be leveled with them. If your main team is level 85, then everyone is level 85. It's a good system that encourages diversity and creativity among team comps. And it's always nice to know that I can try a different strategy if the one I used was just not very effective. In conclusion, AFK is a fun, cozy, and rewarding experience. There's plenty of characters to unlock, and the game is pretty generous when it comes to giving out summons. There's a lot of diverse content to do, ranging from normal battles, battles with certain obstacles, battles that limit you to certain characters, fights that restrict you to using one buffed character, a gauntlet that allows you to add buffs to your team, and I could go on. There's plenty to do in AFK, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. It's a nice comfort game to play when you wake up in the morning, go to school, or just get back from a break. It doesn't ask for much, but they give you a lot of things to do that you can choose to do at your own pace. There's also a lot of updates being put into the game, which enhance both the story and gameplay. They constantly introduce new characters, new quests, new maps, and they even renew their main stories around every four months to ensure that the game doesn't get stale while also allowing others time to catch up. I've enjoyed the 15 plus hours I've spent playing the game, and I've been pretty lucky with the five stars. Plus, it helps that the game wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. There were plenty of times where I had to actually think and change my character's placements to win the battle. But other times, the answer was just simply to wait the next day so I could get enough resources to level up my characters. If you're looking for a new mobile and PC gotcha game to get into, I'd recommend giving it a shot. You'll be surprised with how much is actually in the game. You can give it a try using my link in the description. And remember, if you play for seven days straight, you can get over 200 summons and many different heroes for free in the end. Thank you to AFK Journey for giving me early access to the game, and I hope you all will embark on a new journey into Asperia. Tell me why I